so I'm looking forward to hearing even more <clears throat> from you. What a beautiful song, like a prayer that we should commit to saying every day for, um, you know, what we're called to do is to try to follow the steps of our loving Savior. Um, so David mentioned that he's recruiting for choir, and um, I do want to mention up front that um, he went to an awful lot of work to make sure that I didn't sing today. <laughs> because uh, when I read the lectionary texts, it, it really reminded me of a song uh, that my family used to sing in the car and really jazz it up a bit. And it came from an old show that my grandma used to watch on reruns and sing um, endlessly. And the only thing I remember about the show, which was called Hee Haw, um, and I was wondering how many young folks might have came from of it. Um, Isaac, but he's older than I am. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> so I wasn't sure how many folks might have heard Hee Haw. The only thing I remember is there's this one character, um, Minnie Pearl, who always had a price tag hanging from the brim of her hat, and like, but mom, she shouldn't come out like that. But I guess that's the character thing. So uh, some of the lectionary texts for today are kind of heavy, and it reminded me of a song that um, was used on that show every week that always preceded a series of jokes about the downtrodden. And so I invite you to sing along to this classic song that, that David wanted to make sure that I didn't sing. <laughs> with grief 
when he hears that his beloved son is at the <coughs> but his son nonetheless has been killed. And um, he, you can hear in the voice that's uh, in the story how badly he hurts of the loss of his son. And he says, oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Um, he was so overwrought with grief from this that he disappeared from the public eye for quite some time. And his friends had to go back and say, you know, grief is a luxury we can't afford right now. You need to get yourself together. But we can understand the depths of this loss that he feels in his heart. In fact, that same kind of grief we can hear plainly in the Psalms for today, Psalms 130. We don't know if that was written by David, who wrote a lot of Psalms or not. But it starts out, as Caleb read, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my supplications. I can imagine David feeling that way. Out of the depths I cry to you. And so there are many psalms that, dis, that embrace all these various, you know, emotions, um, feelings of despair, anger, grief, fear, hopelessness. Um, I try to live a life of avoidance. I like to avoid those feelings. However, um, if you're part of the human race, none of us get through without experiencing some of these things. And... Um, it is helpful to read how others sometimes get through them. Um, the whole life of Jesus um, shows us that you know God's not just this empty spectator watching. God understands how it feels to be in those places, in those depths in which we might cry out. Um, my youngest brother died in June, as many of you know. Uh, from an unexpected cardiac arrest. Uh, he had lots of health challenges and had also had a number of battles with substance abuse. And I was in regular communication with him, um, particularly when things were going wrong in his life. And so there were um, a lot of challenges in my brother's life. And so it's been very surprising to me um, to uh, to realize how difficult his death has been for me. Um, it, it continues to make me very, very sad, unexpectedly sad. Um, I don't know if it's because it causes me to think of my parents. Um, when I was in college, my mother got early onset uh, Parkinson's Plus, didn't respond to normal medications, and in fact, she spent the last 18 years of her life paralyzed unable to move, a horrible thing to even imagine going through. And in the same time period, my dad got cancer. And so by the time I was 30, I had experience putting both of my parents in different nursing homes because of their different needs, a skill which many people don't develop till later in life. Um, so these sorts of things are heartbreaking, and I know that I am not alone in having gone through them. Um, and I am susceptible to bouts to of depression based on some of these things. Um, for my own personal happenings as well as, I have to admit, I get overwhelmed by some of the things going on in the world. Um, I become distraught over some of the political issues and injustices, and I can often get really flared up and passionate about things because at heart I'm an advocate. Uh, but sometimes it just feels too overwhelming. Um, after the Trump election, I gave up television news, and I used to be a news junkie. I would watch various programs, and I would even chart to see um, what order they covered things in, because I always thought it was interesting to see the different ways that common events are shared. I couldn't do it anymore. It didn't matter what channel was on. I didn't like hearing people yelling at each other, uh, which seems to be the changing tenor of discussions. So I read multiple newspapers, and I find it 
less upsetting to read about things, so I continue to be well informed. But I had dinner this past week with my nephew, and I happened to be seated in a way in which it was unavoidable to be watching a Fox News program. And I could read the words were at the bottom, and I learned that all progressives hate babies and families. And so my poor nephew had to suffer through me talking back to the television <laughs> and um, you know, proclaiming, I do not hate babies and I don't hate families. Let me assure you all right now, I don't. Um, and so this was a reaffirmation to me that I still need to stay away from television broadcast. I can't take it. Um, so these things can weigh me down. Um, so what suggestions do I have for this sort of thing? First of all, for all you who inevitably will go through these things, and maybe right now, these are things often that happen in closed doors for families all across our state. We don't know about the burdens that you're carrying. Um, take care of yourself. Uh, God doesn't expect us to be happy all the time. God knows about suffering. God knows how it feels, and that is a natural part of being a beloved child. No feelings of guilt are necessary when you respond to the sad things that go on in life. Um, so take care of yourself. Rest. If you need help, um, consider going to a counselor. It can be very helpful. I, I, want to share that I have gone to counseling multiple times and situational things going on in, in with my family's uh, conditions that we've been going through. Um, seek out help. I also have friends who have committed suicide because they felt overwhelmed and so it's a serious issue and we have people in the congregation who have far more expertise as, as Jasmine is uh, quick to note that um, we all lack expert, expertise in lots of things, but um, there are people in this congregation who can point you in the right direction if you think you need help. So always be mindful of that and, and supportive of friends who you might find in those situations. And I know that Julius in particular, um, in working with her, he's saying, what's she gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> I know this is something that folks that work with um, students who will be returning to campus soon, Keep a careful eye on making sure they know how to find help uh, when they're feeling some of these feelings. But some of it is just a normal consequence of being a, a you know, passionate and compassionate person. I also tend to stick to routines because I know that my experience tells me I will get through it. Um, it will pass. And so I stick with the things that I think often work, which means coming to church, being around people who love and care for me, who help me. I read the Bible, and I pray. So those are some of my personal tricks. Um, thirdly, lean on others. Um, I cannot tell you how touched I was last Sunday when we took a look at the 121st Psalms, where it says, I look to the hills from whence comes my help. And my beloved friend Isaac got up here and talked about how did he find strength to get through his very difficult struggles with cancer. And I thank you, Isaac, for, for sharing that very personal story. Um, and yet, it was enlightening to me because what he told us was that one of the things that seemed to be most important to him was seeing the faith in God of others as they expressed care and concern for him. It helped lift his burdens to know that others were behind him, cheering him on in various ways. Um, that's very meaningful, I think, to all of us as Christians to know that those kinds of efforts make a difference. Sometimes on Facebook, uh, people post that they lost a loved one, and it's like, it doesn't really matter if I, you know, post, you know, praying for you. When my brother died, and I shared it on Facebook, I can't tell you how many times I reread the posts that people had left for me, 
because it provided me comfort to know that others were carrying me in their hearts. Um, so now, when I ask myself, is it worth bothering, I now know. It is worth bothering to make expressions of care and concern. Um, it can mean a lot. Um, as Isaac said, the texts made a difference to him. The prayers, the calls, the cards, the visits, it doesn't really matter what it is, um, but for others to know that we carry them in our hearts, uh, in prayers to God, in this very personal way, we are extending our love to others. Um, but the relief from all this comes from um, our final reading, which came from Ephesians. And it provides sort of a recipe for how we can help each other through these tough times. Um, it's kind of a reminder that no man is an island. And when you hurt, I hurt. We are diminished by the pain of others. And so Paul wrote to this young church in Ephesus in which they were struggling with kind of the, you know, growing pains and challenges. You know, it's a new church. What does it mean, this Christian church? How do we do it? Um, they were starting from scratch. And what he tells them is that we're all members of one body. You know, don't let the sun go down in anger. Cure it. Have a discussion. You may not agree, um, but as uh, there's a saying, like, it's a mistake of my head, not my heart. Heart says, I love you, even though we may disagree on how big of an expert I am in critical race theory. <laughs> so there's another um, suggestion in the uh, Ephesus letter, and this is one I need to personally work on. Um, don't let unwholesome things come out of your mouth. Uh, when I watch broadcast news, I am not always uh, wholesome in what I'm saying. And, Daniel was a, certainly a witness to that. I can work better on that. Uh, it suggested that we use our mouths to express things that build people up. And then finally be kind and compassionate to each other, just as Christ forgave us. And follow God's example as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just like the song that uh, we were treated to this morning. Help us all to be more like Jesus. So I assure you that boom, despair, and agony will visit you at some point. Um, and if we all follow our Christian calling, we'll be there for others to help them through those rough points. We'll be there for others who are our known beloved friends, but also for our beloved brothers and sisters who we don't even know which is why serving others is such a critical call um, that Jesus sets an example of, you know, bringing together some of the most unpopular and unsavory characters of his, of his day. Um, that's what we're called to do, to know about the challenges others are going through. It's the way we share God's love in how we respond to these situations. May we all learn how to be that healing presence in the lives of others, both those that we love and those we don't even know. Amen.